to get out of control now. I look for Obi Trotter to start taking control of the game again. And he's a point guard, he's a leader, and he's a coach on the floor. So he sets the tone for a &M. Now Oliver, we saw him take that long shot from the near wing in the last possession. Nine of 18 from three-point range this year during the regular season, but you still don't expect your six, seven power guy who rebounds to take shots like that. Well, if he's shooting from out there, he's not in a position to get a rebound, which is what he does best. That jump shot by Golden off the mark, and here's Horton. Oh, nice going up high for the rebound. That time by Andre Matthews, so he must not be feeling the ill effects of that sprained ankle. Suffered in the second half yesterday. It was an impressive rebound. He got up big time. Got to nail these down Ball now, though. 25, Spicer, Spicer 6 of 11 of Alabama State's four. rebounds and 8 of 12 of their points. So he has contributed a lot, to say the least, through the first nine minutes and 17 seconds of this one. Here comes Mr. Shot Blocker, Derek Russell, for. Alabama State, big 6'10 uh, sophomore out of Alexander City, Alabama. And Everett Smith, not Everett Smith, I'm sorry, Matthews connects on both those free throws. One point game when we come back. 10.43 to go in the first half. Alabama State holding a one point lead. It's now time for our Geico student athlete for Alabama A&M. It is the gunslinger, Ricky Ricketts. Just broke the huddle there at 3.4 GPA in sociology. And student athlete brought to you by Geico, the sensible alternative. We'll have Alabama States in just a little while. Alabama State will inbound underneath its basket and no full court pressure coming out of this timeout for the Bulldogs. But Ricketts going to meet Malcolm Campbell just across the half court line. Well, they're the one-three-one defense right now. One-three-one matchup. Alabama State should know all about that. The open look. Alexander Oliver for three-point range from the far wing is no good, and the ball batted out of bounds belongs to Alabama A&M. Like we said, Coach Petaway changing up his defense. Is going full-court trap, half-court trap, three-quarter court trap. We still haven't seen the tempo get up to the area that he likes it, so. No, we haven't, but as long as he can keep it right here, one one or two-point difference, he's going uh, to be feeling pretty good. O.B. Trotter off the dribble beats Malcolm Campbell, who reaches in. And the only question is whether he was shooting, and yet they're going to award him two shots. Get right into the meat of that defense. That's what you need against a matchup, uh, against a matchup zone. You need to get penetration. Coach Spivery may be a little bit to think about if the foul is indeed on Campbell. That would be number two. Most most uh, teams or coaches now sub players out when they get two fouls in the first half. I know Coach Spivery is over there thinking about it, but he also has a lot of confidence in Malcolm Campbell because that's his uh, coach on the floor. So I'm sure he's thinking that, hey, well, he's thinking like me and knows he can't afford to get another foul. Ryder missed the uh, second free throw, and you saw how both teams fought madly for that loose ball. 12 all contest, 10 minutes to go in the first half of play for the SWAC Conference Men's Championship kick ball. That'll be a fresh 35 for Alabama State. They don't have a bunch of offensive weapons, Alabama State. I mean, Malcolm Campbell. Maybe their best all-around player only averaged 12.7 a game, and Golden, their second leading scorer, at 12-2. So they like to keep the tempo slow and keep you in the 50s. They feel they have a chance to beat you that way. Exactly. That's that's a result too of the matchup zone. They're just being smart. Skip pass and that shot taken by Golden, and Alabama State comes away with an offensive rebound. Xavier Oliver is a workhorse. He goes in, gets a rebound, and then comes back out so he can give Malcolm Campbell a screen, a ball screen. Oliver, three-point effort. Got it. 50% shooter from out there during the regular season, and Xavier Oliver gets on the board in a big way. Wow. Pass down inside, batted away by Russell. Here comes Alabama State. They don't have numbers, though. 
And M, five turnovers in the game. Oh, Oliver was thinking about it. <laughs> Got it to Golden on the near side. Alexander Oliver baseline difficult shot but he made the pass and somehow Xavier Oliver got it up and in against somebody grabbing his arm what strength hey let me tell you something he's changed the complexion of this game right now with his rebounding and with his scoring you don't expect a lot of scoring from him but hey let me tell you something right there he just showed that the weight room is paying off as he gives the Antoine Walker shimmy a little shake of the head after that one like who was on there was somebody on my arm <laughs> Xavier Oliver 58% from the line and showed it there, but Alabama State goes up and gets another offensive rebound. Seven points off of second chance opportunities. Russell hacks from behind, and he'll go to the free throw line. And if you think Oliver struggles a little bit, Derek Russell really struggles from the free throw line. Only a 41% shooter from there. You know what you like to tell players like that? Just give me one, baby. Just give me one. Take his mind off of it. Ease him. Ease his mind to say, just give me one. First one, no good. And the second one is going to the bench was a Jarvis Smith for Alabama A&M. Russell misses them both. Does Alabama State get another offensive rebound? No. Here comes Ricketts. And Ricketts ran over his defender, Sam Millage. That's an offensive foul. Offensive foul. Little overzealous there for Ricky Ricketts. Got to be smarter than that. And you know he didn't really have a big offensive night last night, but you can't come back and try to force and get it all back in one basket. We have a timeout on the floor as Ricketts is going to go to the bench. Coach is telling him, hey, settle it down. He tried to up the tempo all by himself, but Alabama stayed back on defense to pick up the charging call. Right now, Kevin Spicer leads the way for State with eight points and a lot of balance uh, by Alabama A&M, Obi Trotter leading the way with four right now. For a smooth blend of RB, hip hop, jazz, and gospel, tune into The Lounge. Watch The Lounge Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. on NBC Network. When does the frustration finally begin to set in when a team is slowing your tempo and you think upping the tempo means I'll dribble it quickly myself and set something up and that's that's certainly not going to work generally. I don't know when I could tell, when you can tell the frustration is going to sit in. If you can predict it, rather, you just want to keep your composure and know that hey, this is a five-point ball game right now, so it's not like we're getting blown out. Keep it close so you can get to your style and dictate your tempo. The backcourt double team forced a turnover. They slapped it off of Derek Russell. The thing that's ironic is that that Alabama State has, has created six turnovers by AM and has gotten six points off of those turnovers as well. Terry Horton started so quickly in the semifinal game, only two points so far in this one. Going up strong as everybody, a lot of bodies bumping inside, and now we finally get a whistle. Yeah, it'll be trying to point guard down there rebounding with the big fellas. Basketball will be, uh, stay in the possession of Alabama State. Um, trapping defense. Got him in trouble in the backcourt. Finally, he sees Xavier Oliver ahead of the pack, who wisely brings it out. Great job of stepping through that trap right there. You got to keep your composure. Great drive by Alexander Oliver there. Sam Millage taking over as Campbell gets the rest of Millage. Joining in for three, and Xavier Oliver would have brought the house down had he thrown in that left-handed follow. Anyway, he gets the left-handed layup. He has seven off the rebound. He has been a monster in this one. Three-point field goal. Ooh. Yeah, that's I think that's offensive there. goal tending on Chris Collins on the follow. Boy, if he had just a little better timing, 
Obi tried to turn him out. I think that was going to go in. 19 to 12 with 7.56 to go in the half, thanks in large part to Xavier Oliver. We'll be back. Beautiful Birmingham, Alabama, 7.56 to go in the first half, 19-12 Alabama State, and the story is their ability to rebound and give themselves many chances to score. You know what? Any team, you want to try to get as many. You rebound. Rebounding in defense is what wins championships. As you can see, Alabama State, I mean, they are, they are attacking that glass relentlessly and giving themselves second opportunities. That's the story of the ball game so far. And Jay Walker reported from the sidelines that Coach L. Van Penaway was telling his team, hey guys, we if we want a chance here, we have got to rebound, rebound, rebound the basketball. Look at the rebounding differential early and the second chance points. Alabama State 9-2 to two in that category. That's your story right now. Alabama State a seven-point lead and on a 7 nothing run over the last minute 30. Bodies all over the place. And Alabama A&M gets a timeout. So they'll both go talk it over just again. Xavier Oliver looked like he was trying to prepare to do something spectacular, put it on the floor and got it knocked away, coach. Yeah, he was. <laughs> That's why you have guards, though. Guards are supposed to handle the basketball and make the decisions. Big guys need to get themselves in position to score and rebound. Time now for our Geico trivia question. Since 1990, name the only school to win back-to-back -back SWAC men's tournament title. Think you know the answer? Log on to our website at www.mbcnetwork.com. Give your answer and become eligible for a special sports prize pack. That's our trivia question brought to you by GEICO, the sensible alternative. a and seven turnovers so far in the game. Kenobi Trotter shooting and hitting quickly. He has six points in the first half. Still like you talked about, Todd, only a five-point game. And now a little zone pressure being applied to maybe trip up Alabama State here. Well, you know, that, that's their style. I mean, you can expect to continually see a half-court trap. Or, as you say, switch it up to a full-court trap. But I think Alabama State's doing an excellent job recognizing right now. Raphael Golden, a nice strong move on the near baseline, and Golden gets on the scoreboard his first two. And then I try to. A little bit off line there with the air ball. But he's got the green light to shoot. And that won't bother him one bit. He can't do it all by himself, though. He has to be smart. You got to get your teammates involved as much as you can. Alabama State the inbound, almost threw it away, but I think Oliver saved him on a turnover with his great athletic ability. Alabama State outscoring him in the paint as well, 12 to 2 early on, and that kicked ball, so they'll get a fresh 35 once again. Toby Trotter came over to double team. State's putting a lot of pressure on, I mean, Alabama and m rather, is putting a lot of pressure on State to make decisions. If you get trapped like this in a half-court set, your players have to make quick decisions. And look at Xavier Oliver almost threw that one back in, but the ball wedged between the backboard and the rim. And, but th this guy, I mean, he's one of the more athletic guys we've oh. seen all year. Oh, no question about it. He is a tremendous athlete. Do you see how quick he's getting back to the glass? Hey, I bet you, I'll tell you what, if, if, if basketball doesn't work out for him, I'm sure that a football team in the NFL. Yeah, somebody take some him and make him into a tight end or a defensive end or something. Down inside, Collins has it blocked. Here comes the block party. Here comes the fight, too, for the loose ball. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. Get ready for round two. Who wants it the most? That's what it comes down to, baby. You got to play with a sense of urgency all the time. Not part time, all the time. Big Russ, we had a big game last night. He started that block party. I think it was his block party. He invited everybody. AM's only gotten one field goal in the last five minutes and 40 seconds. Defense, defense, defense for Rob Spivery's Hornets of Alabama State. At the size to block shots, the athletes like Xavier Oliver. 
and the patience on offense. Oliver again for three and pushed from behind was Russell that time by Lorenzo Burks. Again, we got word earlier today that Burks turned an ankle in practice or a shoot around earlier today. They don't practice usually that hard on the day of a game. But you land wrong on it or something. And see the extra padding and everything on that left ankle. And time now for our second Geico student athlete, and he is the guy, Derek Russell. Is that Geico student athlete a 3.0 in business? So he'll know how to handle the money when he makes the big bucks at whatever he might decide to do. Big fella. Student athlete brought to you by Geico, the sensible alternative. Big fella knocked down that free throw right there. Oh, that's right. You know, the reason why we're not seeing Malcolm Campbell right now is because he has two fouls. And as we said, a lot of coaches' philosophy is to take a player out when he has two fouls. Wow, he really looked. Confident as he stroked that second one. Two for two. Body yeah. language, body language. Nine point game. And a push foul and check. Officials have been calling that one throughout the tournament. And Sam Millage picks up the foul. His first. Sam Millage doing an excellent job. Subbing for Malcolm Campbell here. You, know, you have to have a bench in order to, to do well in postseason. Burks putting it on the floor, getting in some trouble. Still in trouble. Terry Horton in trouble as well. And Alabama State comes up with the turnover. State's defense is tremendous right now. They're closing they down. Smothering. They're closing down on the ball immediately. Eighth turnover on the Bulldogs of AM. Nice skip pass to the near side. And the jump stop. And Alexander Oliver. Nice move there, flashing through the lane. I'll tell you first two. I'll tell you right now, Alabama State looks like they want it the most right now. I mean, they are playing with a sense of urgency. They are playing hard. Obi trying to go in one on one, but got that one to fall. He has eight points. He's trying to do it by himself, and I'm gonna tell you the danger. The danger of that is that your point guard, when he tries to do it by himself in the first half, he's tired in the second half. That's why, as a point guard, you want to try to get your teammates involved in the first half as much as you can. It might be a little unfair to Obi trying to right now because right now he's the only one that's able to score for a &M. Obi trying to doing it on the defensive end with the steal, setting up Ricky Ricketts in transition. That's what you want to see right there. You want to get these guys involved because he can get his own shot, but not everybody else on this AM team can do it. Inside of four minutes to go here in the first half, and the deficit is seven for Alabama AM. Millage looking for a way to attack. You want to balance the floors. Millage. Sends it, ex uh, not Xavier Oliver, but Alexander Oliver over to the uh, to the wing. Two on the clock. Just hit rim, and they got the rebound, but over the back. Are they calling the shot clock right now? They call over the back foul, which they did, and they called it on Raphael Golden, I believe. And that creates a uh, one and one bonus situation for Alabama A&M. Of course, Bobby not too happy about that. He's looking on. Chris Collins is going to go to the line to shoot the one plus the bonus. And his team trailing by seven with 324 to go here in the first half. Confidently knocks down that first one. Yeah, he shoots 76 percent from the free throw line. That's pretty good for Big Fellow. Looking at Coach Petaway there, thinking what is what is his next move. And it's good. Chris Collins converts both free throws, but so far Alabama State has been doing it on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. 
Uplifting, insightful, informative talk. Welcome back to Birmingham, where the Alabama State Hornets have a five-point edge over Alabama A&M Bulldogs. You know, talk about a story of two contradictory huddles. For Alabama State, you go to their huddle, they're calm, they're cool, collected. Everything they draw up seems to be working. Alabama A&M, you go in their huddle, their Coach Petaway is still trying to make his team force tempo, create tempo. So they're kind of trying to do whatever they can to jumpstart their offense with Coach Spivey on the side, calm, cool, collected. He's just acting like he's going through a stroll in the park. Eric, Todd, back to you. Jay Walker, thank you. Todd? You know, that's uh, Coach Spivey's, that's his M.O. He's always been calm, cool, and collected as long as I've known him. I've known him quite some time now. Double team, then they get the steal. Obi Trotter coming back the other way with it. Terry Horton, the trailer on the break. And now they're due within three, inside three minutes to go here in the first half. That's what Coach Petaway is looking for. He's looking for that transition game. And Obi Trotter there for the last two possessions. He's got his teammates involved here. Now the thing that they have to do is rebound and not allow Alabama State to get second chance opportunities because they've gotten 11 so far. See Obi Trice making the right decision. Giving it to his teammate, getting him involved. I like to see uh, Xavier Oliver, if he gets trapped again, to get below the trap. You gotta protect the basketball, not try to throw it through the extended arms of the defense. Miller takes some trouble, dribbled through it. Now passes inside and fouled hard was Raphael Golden. Wow, that seemed like an eternity there doing that, that particular uh, possession. Yeah, they... <laughs> That's called boxing out. That's how you keep a guy off the boards, I guess, huh? <laughs> Behind the NBA line. Hey, everybody's got to find somebody to put a body on. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter if he's in the backcourt, close to backcourt, <laughs> half court, it doesn't matter. Raphael Golden missing that opportunity. Trying to add to his team's three-point advantage. Alabama State has pretty much controlled tempo, but a couple of turnovers and a few steals have gotten Alabama A&M scoring the last couple field goals on transition opportunities. That's what they want. Alabama State would like to keep it slow. Trotter on the hole trying to figure out how to fight against that matchup zone. Both teams trying to figure that out when they get the ball in the half court set. Trotter, long three. Millage a rebound, knocked to the floor. And Alabama State comes away with it. Great hustle play. I was going to say Golden doesn't have the numbers, so he might want to take his time. Give it to one of the guards. Oliver gets it to Xavier Oliver. Great movement, Millet, the open look. You had to know that was coming, Eric, because he has been close all night. The X-Man cometh and almost a follow on the other end. I believe that was Chris Collins who tried to ram it back home. Alexander Oliver with the left hand can't hit. Got Alabama State another offensive rebound. We're just going to brand him the X-Man right now. <laughs> wow. Xavier Oliver brought the house down with that one. Alexander Oliver comes in. Rebound. More and more second chances. <laughs> and Xavier Oliver, after the whistle, brings down the house again. The big fella bring is not back, playing. Bring dude. back the slam dunk of the night here on NBC. Big fella is not playing. Let me tell you something. If you continue to go to the glass, nothing but good things are going to happen. But he was bound to get one of those because he is attacking the glass every single opportunity. I see you, big fella. Mm. I was actually able to do that once in the game. Follow jam. In a game of what? Basketball. And then I woke up, <laughs> realized I was dreaming. <laughs> you didn't believe I really did that, did you? Well, I thought you was going. I, I figured you were going to give me one of those. Uh, five, like Mike, at five ten and three quarters, I, I wasn't able to 
throw it down like that. Four rebounds, nine points for the X-Man. Xavier Oliver and Alabama A&M turns it over again. Got to protect that basketball, can't afford those turnovers. The trap spikes are in the backboard, but State breaks it. Looking here, the opportunity to go two for one and get a quick basket. Then they're going to get the ball back again because of the difference in the shot clock and the game clock. Coach decides he wants to get a timeout to make sure he gets a good shot. Spivery with a 30-second timeout, 39.8 left in the half, 21 on the shot clock. And start your day with power and praise on weekday mornings on NBC Network. Here's some of the most dynamic ministers share words of light, hope, and praise. Watch Empower Ministry on NBC Network weekdays at 5 and 8, or 5 to 8, and 9 to 11 a.m. right here on NBC. Seven point differential right now, 39.8 seconds to go in the half. Of course, Coach Rob Spivery in Alabama State made it to the big dance back in 2001, winning the tournament there in the SWAC conference and facing a tough Michigan State team. And they tried that matchup zone, didn't score much, only scored 35 against the Spartans, lost at 69 35 in round one. Back in 2001 in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I think that was a, the uh, year the state won the tournament, though. Yep. I mean, they won the whole shebang, so that was a pretty tough matchup anyway. Definitely a tough matchup. Millich had the lane and dumped it back outside. And guess who? Woo! Big fellas having a ball game right now. I wonder if Coach drew that player for him in the corner to get a three. His second three-pointer of the game. And we have another near steal, but we have an offensive foul against Terry Horton. So quickly, a 10-point advantage being built up by the Hornets. How about last night? We didn't see him take one of those shots from outside last night. He was very disciplined. He kept passing the ball around. But tonight, he said, hey, baby, I got some more in my arsenal. He does have more in his arsenal. A surprising 9 of 18 from beyond the arc during the regular season. Time winding down, and Sam Millich draws the foul. And I believe that's who an OB Trotter. And that'll be number two on him with just three seconds to go in the half. Yeah, you don't like to see him get a foul like that with three seconds to go. You kind of want to let it go, let that clock run out. So a chance to extend that lead to the 11 or 12 point mark for Sam Millage, who has been perfect from the free throw line and limited action backing up. Of course, the floor general, Malcolm Campbell, plays almost all the time. Yeah, the difference in this first half right now has been oh, mishap right there. Did they call a timeout or did he do a lane violation? It was a lane violation. Lane violation, so he never got an opportunity to get that second free throw up. Wow. And this will end the half. And Obi Trotter is fortunate not to have picked up a charging foul on that, that particular close, time. Close, heads up play though by Alabama State. So we've reached the halfway mark. 33-22 in favor of the Hornets of Alabama State. They have controlled tempo and pretty much everything else, especially the rebounding in this first half. Jay Walker as your leading coach, Rob Spivery. Jay? Coach Spivery, team's looking good right now in the first half. What can you improve upon in the second half? Well, I think we can play a little bit better defense still and work the ball inside more on offense. We're, we're settling for a lot of jump shots right now, and i like to see us get the ball in around the basket a little bit more, whether we pass it in in the low post or we drive it into the lane. Coach Bozeman said you guys are just killing them on the rebound and on the glass. What would you say? Did you stress rebounding coming into this game? We really did. We wanted to control both ends of the backboard, particularly the defensive side of things. As long as we can limit them to one shot, on defense, then we're going to be okay. Thank you so much, Coach. Well, good luck to you in the second half. We're at halftime here. A lot of emotion, a lot of people getting physical, and a lot of people playing hard here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's halftime of the men's SWAC championship. One here. Let's go to our crew for a first half recap. The guys that are calling the action for you, Coach Todd Bozeman and Eric Clemens. Guys? All right, Jay, thank you very much. The music is loud, and so far, our bodies have been banging a lot out there, especially if you're the Hornets of Alabama State. They have controlled the tempo with physicalness on defense. They have really rebounded the ball and kind of taken 
the Bulldogs of AM out of everything they like to do, which is to keep the tempo at a fast pace. They definitely have, Eric. Rebounding and second chance points have, or second chance opportunities have been the story of the first half here tonight. Alabama State is doing a tremendous job rebounding, as you can see, led by Xavier Oliver. He's doing an outstanding job. On the other side, Alabama AM taking the opportunities when they can get it to try to set up their trip, their press. Get, up, get in the open floor, Obi Trice finding his teammates, and then whenever possible, doing it himself. And they're getting ready to start the second half, 33-22. Alabama State leading. Can they hold on for 20 more minutes? Or can Eric Clemens, Todd Bozeman, and Jay Walker back with you here at Fair Park Arena. About to start the second half. 11 points separating these two. Somebody's going dancing before. Let's go back to Jay Walker, Jay. Coach Bedaway, it seemed like Alabama State dictated the tempo to you. How can you combat that in the second half? Well, we got to do a better job of pushing them away from the basket. Oh, they're killing us on the offensive glass. We've got to force more turnovers. I thought that we had some good traps, but we let them out a few of them. We just got to pick it up. We're just not playing intense enough for me. Yeah, it seems like they're getting physical with you, and they're dominating the round, the rebound. How do you control that? Right, that, that's true. We just got to get tough. We got to roll up our sleeves and go to work this half. This has to be the Bulldogs' hands. We just got to go to work. Good luck to you in the second half, right. Coach. Thanks Thank for your you. time. Eric, Todd, back to you. Jay Walker and Coach L. Van Petaway take a look quickly at the first half stats, and we talked about it really all half long, the rebounding differential, second chance points. Definitely. I'll tell you one thing that kind of stands out a little bit is the free throw percentage that Alabama State has, 58% from the free throw line. Just imagine if they were what all coaches wanted, 70%. It'd be an even bigger lead here. And the rebounds, that stands out for sure because State is killing uh, A&M on the glass. Especially on the offensive glass, 13 offensive rebounds to only two in that first half. Alabama A&M getting the ball first to open the second half. 11 points down in 20 minutes to try to make up the deficit for a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. As we talk about time and time again, the first five minutes in the second half are very, very important. All oh, pass inside and a little lower of the shoulder from Otis Walker. And they all never give you that kind of activity. They will never call the defensive foul when they see that shoulder lower. Yeah, he he kind of got that definitely because he lowered the shoulder for sure. And the Bulldogs come out applying full court pressure. And Alexander Oliver dribbling out of trouble. And now Alabama State will get in its set offense. Now it's up to State now to take their time and get good shots. Coming out with the lineup to start at Smith, Spicer, Golden, Campbell, and Oliver. Alexander Oliver, that is. Campbell picked up two fouls in the first half, and there's an open look from Oliver. And a shot of brick there, not Oliver, I'm sorry, Rafael Golden from the far side. And here's Burks, held scoreless in the first half. Smith making his move across the lane, lost control of it, and it'll be Alabama State ball. Otis Walker losing that one out. See if AM can get their press. Established here, get some turnovers, get some open, uh, open court opportunities. Because they, they kind of thrive on that. Deliberately work it up. Just got it over the timeline for a 10 second violation. And Oliver had to throw that one that way up. He was challenged by Otis Walker taking that shot. And Obi Trotter working against Campbell. Creating his own. Back rim, that one. Obi tried, as we said in the first half, he needs to get his teammates established. Another charge, two charges. So Raphael far Golden second. picks up a second. And we played almost two minutes, and no points have been scored here in the second half. Raphael Golden, second personal. He coached by for his crew, calm and collected, but almost never satisfied. Most coaches aren't. That's right. You're only satisfied when you win it all. For about a day. Exactly. <laughs> Time to go back to work. Otis Walker's still in the game. And he, and he has three fouls right now. And they got good depth up there where he is. Chris Collins comes off the bench and plays. And then we got a pick off the ball and an offensive foul. That was on the screen there, Malcolm. 
Campbell was going run off of a screen, but he also was pushed at the same time. And m giving a different look now. Jarvis Smith, change. a hard screen being set there. Picks up the foul on their steal out at the half court mark by Terry Horton. Holden. And a little walk by Jermaine Smith. He came to a hop stop after he received the pass on the near side. So, to say the least, pretty sloppy play we've seen to start the uh, second half from both teams. No points. 17 28 to go. You would expect to see that in the first half, but not the start of the second half. Teams getting down trying to solve the matchup zone being employed. And Horton floats in the lane. Finally, Blake's Blake breaks rather the scoring drop. We hadn't heard from Horton in a while, even in the first half. He started the game out with a bucket, but then ended the half not contributing much at all. Active on defense. Horton will take it all away. He missed, but the tap in that time by Jarvis Smith. His first two points of the game. And now Alabama AM to within seven. Starting to see AM pick it up now. This is what they wanted. They want to get traps. They want to create some steals, get some fast break opportunities. Campbell baseline, that one blocked by Smith. And here come the Bulldogs once again. Burks with the left hand, no good to follow. No good. And up and over the back was Raphael Golden. And you're seeing some hustle out of Alabama A&M right now. It's funny, on a dime, momentum can change. Yes, yeah, turned around a lot. A&M, they rely a lot on their half-court trap and fast-break opportunities. So you definitely are seeing a change in their, in their style in the second half. And a nice spin move inside that time by Jarvis Smith. He has four points. I think you're gonna, you can expect to see Xavier Oliver soon because he brought a lot of energy for the state in that first half. And a timeout being taken by Rod Spiver is Xavier Oliver checked in at the scores table, so number 34 will be coming on in just a few. Alabama A&M chipping away at that deficit. Fair Park Arena as we take a look at the Hornet cheerleaders, Alabama State holding on to a five-point lead with 16.06 to go. Time now for our Geico MVC trivia question answer. The question again, since 1990, name the only school to win back-to-back -back SWAC men's tournament titles, and the answer is uh, Texas Southern, 1994 and 1995. That's our trivia question. Trivia question, I'll get it right soon. Brought to you by Geico, the sensible alternative. See if State coming out of this timeout, what kind of set they'll run. They want to get a good look here. They've had a couple of possessions where they came up empty. Need to get a basket here. Stop this run by AM. Xavier Oliver in the game, but they didn't need him for that one. The floor general, Malcolm Campbell, comes up with the three. Who else would you have voted for to take that shot but Malcolm Campbell? He has five so far in the game. Burks puts it on the floor and dishes it back out to Trotter. And they were going to give him three, but I definitely, from this angle, even saw his left foot on the three-point line. But sometimes they give them to you, sometimes they miss them. I'll be trying to miss that opportunity. And the rebounding machine came up with it. Rebound of that missed clear by and him and Trotter took it all the way into the lane and got it to fall. Whenever you see them get out in transition, you, you're looking for good things to happen because that's their style and that's what they want. They're more, more comfortable in that. Seeing a half-court trap, State doing a good job working the ball around. Oliver tried to take a flop after missing the three-pointer. Obi Trotter with a three-pointer. and m could cut the deficit to three. They trail by 11 at the break. Burks kind of orchestrating now, moving Obi Trotter to the wing, giving him a better opportunity to score. Shot clock down under 10. Have to be aware that that's a point guard's responsibility. Shot clock under five. Burks. 
front rim the three point effort but they got the offensive rebound thanks to Jarvis Smith tough part for for Burks is that when you have a injury the ankle you can't get up off the floor as well Trotter has into traffic and give him the basket and count it now did that ball Hit when Obi tried to throw that ball. Did it hit the glass or something? I don't understand why they about a shot clock be set. I, I don't either. I mean, he, he disappeared in a sea of bodies in there, and somehow he got pushed by by uh, the big fella there, uh, Jarvis Smith. Pushed right into a foul. Meanwhile, Horton gets the layup, and he's going to have a chance to complete the three-point play and bring his team to within three. Never ending action here in the SWAT conference and never ending close game. Alabama AM has mounted a comeback, much to the chagrin of Rob Spivery. Led by OB Trotter and company, it's a three point game. Three points separating State and AM, and I tell you, AM fortunate. Look at the push in the back there by Jarvis Smith, forcing the foul of Xavier Oliver against Horton and creating a three point play opportunity. A lot of times things go on that. Uh, Fans and even officials don't necessarily see. And that was one of them right there, the camera caught it. And rather once wrote the book, the camera never blinks. That's right. He catches everything. And officials are only human, they cannot. All those bodies inside, it's a wonder they catch as much as they do. Oliver Dangerous cross-court pass was almost picked out out there. See what kind of uh, set State is going to run here. This doesn't look familiar. Maybe something they drew up in a timeout. Shot clock down to five. Better hurry, Campbell. A little bit short, not a violation though, because AM had possession of the basketball. A three-pointer could tie it. Great defensive possession for AM there. You want to come down and get a good basket here. That looked like a travel. No travel call this time. It was Otis Walker going into the lane and creating contact, drawing the foul. He was scoreless in the first half. Spicer complaining about the call. He must have some blood or something. His officials taking him over to the bench. Didn't quite see it there. And he might have taken a right arm or elbow to the face somehow when the when Otis Walker was going up for the shot. Anyway, Derek Russell's coming into the game while they attend to Kevin Spicer on the sideline, and Otis Walker misses the first opportunity. Oh, just walking out a bad free throw shooter, 76%. A little surprised that he missed it there. Now give AM a chance to get into a half court trap here, which is their signature. Near steal there, and Oliver still hangs on to it. State's having some problems with this trap right here. Yeah, well, that's a long effort from three-point range, and now Alabama a &M has it back. Trotter, long down court feed, Horton for the lead. a &M really hustling, so they listen to Coach L. Van Petaway in the dressing room at halftime, telling them to get after it. It's going to be a bulldog half, and so far, they've trimmed that 11-point halftime deficit to two. Might have got that push back there. Big Russell giving it back to AM. Campbell. Obi Trotter comes up with the steal. Here's Horton ahead of the pack. And he's fouled going in. He'll shoot two. They might have caught. No, he didn't call the touch. 
They didn't no, not, not intentional. They might have counted either of the uh, Olivers. Yeah, you got the A&M players signaling an intentional foul. Intentional foul. That wasn't an intentional foul. But I tell you, you got to give them credit for getting back. But if you're going to foul a guy going in, you don't want to allow him to get the basket and the foul to get an and one. So if he's going to get two points, let him get him the old-fashioned way from the free throw line. Terry Horton pretty silent with four points in the first half. And shooting for his 11th, then he got it, and we have a tie game. Oliver, meanwhile, has picked up his third foul. And now this near capacity crowd coming alive. The AM fans. Place holds 4,500 here at Fair Park Arena, 4173. The announced attendance tonight. High score all the way to the basket is Alexander Oliver on a nice move. That's how you attack the matchup zone. You got to get penetration. As Coach Bobby said going into the half, he said either by penetration or on the pass, we need to get it inside, get it in the paint. Rebound and telling the story. State not doing as well of a job in the second half as it did the first half, being out rebounded 11 to 2 in the second half so far. Shot clock at 10. Horton going to work. Pull up. Fighting hard for that rebound was Otis Walker, but it's out of bounds. It'll be Alabama State basketball. Timeout on the floor. 11-17 to go. And Alabama State in for a battle. Which team representing this state will go dancing? We'll find out in just over a half. Fair Park Arena, 11-17 to go. L. Van Petaway is getting the effort he wants from his troops here in the second half. Trail only by two. As NBC Network, the urban source for information and inspiration for the African-American community, presents Willie Gary at ATM for spiritual impact. And then after that, America's Black Forum analyzes the most relevant events at 8.30. Then some of America's brightest minds and controversial newsmakers debate the issues on the future of black America at 9 o'clock p.m. Keep abreast of the issues impacting our world Monday nights on NBC Network. We hope all of you are enjoying black college sports on NBC Network. Once you go swack, you can't go back. <laughs> Bear Park Arena, Birmingham, Alabama. Two-point game, Alabama State leading Alabama A&M. Along with Todd Bozeman and Jay Walker, I am Eric Clemens, so pleased to be here to bring you what has been one of the more exciting SWAC tournaments, I'm sure, in recent memory. Campbell, quick move to the baseline. And now that's trouble. Horton on the steal. Oh, my goodness. What a block by Oliver. And that seal is Alexander Oliver. That was a breakdown there on Alabama A&M's side. And now we have a foul that's attacking the baseline was Horton. And who are they going to get? Will it be Russell or will Oliver pick up number four? What kind of athlete is Xavier Oliver? Oh, my goodness. You think some NBA scouts might have seen that? He's a tremendous athlete, I'll tell you that. A guy with those kind of skills, that kind of leaping ability, and that kind of strength might have a future. Obi Trotter from three in the near wing. And now Alabama A&M dominating the boards here in the second half. They were dominating the first half, and they have really out-hustled the Hornets here in the second. They definitely had, Eric, have, and that's been the difference in the second half. But that was also before Xavier Oliver got back in the game. That's true, and he has brought a lot of energy in this one. 12 points all in the first half, but... What a guy just keeps amazing. Block shots. He went way up there by the box late in the game in the uh, semifinal to come up with a big block and help preserve the victory. Uh, he's a tremendous athlete. There's no question about that. Quick pass inside. That was authority there. And on the push. See, plays like that pick your team up. It picked the energy of the crowd up, everything. Come on, come on. 
in the past, the entry pass by Xavier Oliver. So he's doing more than jumping up, blocking shots, and rebounding. He's passing the ball. He's flashing to open areas. This young man is really affecting this ball club. I don't know if they can afford for him to come off the floor. Might not be able to. He has three fouls right now. You've got to be careful before you pick up that fourth. And uh, Lorenzo Burks gets on the scoreboard for the first time tonight with that free throw. He is the leader of the team. Everybody looks up to him. He's the senior out of New Orleans. And he makes sure everybody's in their place. He doesn't quarterback the team like Trotter, but everybody looks up to him as he's one of two on the line. Obi Trotter leads by example, and Terry Horton, the emotional leader. Thinking about it, that time was Raphael Golden, and they tried to feed Russell down low, and uh, Alexander Oliver threw that one away. State trying to take advantage, get the ball inside, which is, hey, that's what Coach Bobby said he wanted going out into the uh, into the half there. And the shooter's roll, they call that one. Andre Matthews, his first basket of the contest. He has four points in the game, two free throws in the first half. And in nine minute mark. And m interestingly enough, has come out of their trap. So they, they're giving State a different look. The half court matchup zone again. Oh, a nice strong move that time by Russell. They fight hard for the rebound. Terry Horton comes away with it. Presence of mind to get himself back in bounds first before he picked up the loose ball. Did you see how high Oliver went up to almost get that pass? Travel looked like a travel there. Yes, he, he was way up My there. My goodness. And Alexander Oliver gets a foul trying to defend the much taller Andre Matthews in the post. Matthews 6'7". Alexander Oliver only 6-1. Uh, they called that on Matthews. Oh, did, he called a double call foul. A double they foul. A double okay. foul. A double foul, so both of them will pick up one. Both fighting it out. He wasn't sure which way to go with it, so he just gave them both a foul. That's fair. Alabama AM has scored 20 points off of Alabama State turnovers. Which is true to form for both teams. In the first half, it was the rebounding, offensive rebounding. Got State the lead. AM in the second half. They like to create turnovers, get fast break opportunities. So that's why it's a title ball game now. We have a double foul on Barney. Andre Matthews. Double foul is like a possession. It, you, you refer to the possession arrow. Right. It's like a jump ball. And the possession arrow was in the uh, favor of Alabama State. So they'll get possession with their three-point lead. Eight and a half to go in this one. The winner to the NCAA tournament. Golden on the baseline. Rolled it in. Xavier Oliver up there waiting around for it to come off, too. A&M now, they want to take their time, get a basket so they can get back into their trap. Got Obi Trotter playing off of the ball now. So his responsibility now is more of a scorer. Big time shot by Horton there. And a three for Terry Horton. He has 14. Almost get a steal from Oliver, and they try to get one, and they do. And they got some numbers if they hurry. Horton all the way. Good ball game, baby. Got to protect the ball in the trap. Horton is being active right now. Five points here, 16 for the game. He had only four in the first half. Now they're active and trapping again. Malcolm Campbell creates contact and got it to fall. Ooh, the little general, knowing his team needed him. Penetration, good things always come from penetration. I know that. You're either going to get a bucket, get fouled, or in this case, on Alabama State's side, they want him to get it all. The and one. The bucket and one. Campbell, an 81% free throw shooter. Left that one a little bit left, however. So he does not complete the three-point play. Two-point game right now, 46-44. Nothing less than we expected, Eric. That's Nothing sure. less. So many games have come down to the wire. 
Obi Trotter. Hands off to Horton. Stops and pops from the baseline, but he is fouled as Russell went out to get him. AM has not led in this game since two to nothing. Rob Spivery, he had to know that the Bulldogs would come back and make a run. They increased the tempo a little bit, and he doesn't like it, I'm sure. Yeah, as a coach, you definitely expect that to happen. You try your best not to allow it to happen, but you expect it to happen. And Orton, a 75% free throw shooter, misses that first one. Kevin Spicer comes back into the game for Alabama State to replace Derek Russell. I was, I was getting ready to say, you don't expect that to happen, or You see uh, Orton miss a free throw. He missed them both, but Alabama A&M controlling the boards again in this second half. Inside of seven minutes we go. A&M right now controlling the tempo of this game. Want to take the time to get a good basket. Have plenty of time left on the shot clock. Inside of 10 now, running out of time. Ball stolen away by the Hornets. And they're trying to get it to the half court trap off of a miss, which is a little unusual. But if you're able to do it, great strategy. Campbell thought about it, now takes it down the lane. Got a good look at it, just got to convert them. That's exactly what you want. You want to get into the paint as best you can. Burks front rims at him. Oliver over everybody to take it away. He has drawn about four or five oohs and ahs from this near capacity crowd here tonight. I think I got seven or eight oohs and ahs, and he's a rebounding machine. That's Alexander Oliver. He has eight points. Alabama State up by four now. Great ball game, Eric. Approaching the five minute mark, five and a half minute mark. Here's Horton. Rebound the machine, comes up with it again. Now Horton has had the hot hand, he's the emotional leader. But you can't forget the guy who runs the show for you is Obi Trotter. Open look. That one no good by Raphael Golden. Here come the Bulldogs. Up in the tempo, Trotter long three. Oh yeah. Haven't heard from Obi Trotter in a while. Big time shot here. They need a defensive stop right here though. 48-47, I was just mentioning that he hadn't touched the ball the last couple times down. He made sure he touched it that time. That's for sure. Lorenzo Burks found him in a transition. They got him in the two-guard spot for a reason, so he can become a scorer. Most of the time when State needs a bucket, they go to Malcolm Campbell. Blocking foul that time called on Andre Matthews as Alexander Oliver made a strong move off the dribble to the baseline and was turning the corner on him. Not in the bonus as of yet, so they're okay on that one. And we have a timeout on the floor, 4.37 to play, and this one looks like all the rest of the swag games have looked in this tournament. And it's going to go right down to the wire. Horton and company still in it, still alive. Alabama State led by 11 at the half. You see it, 4.37 to go. The winner to go into the dance. Now time for our Dodge play of the game. The X-Man, Xavier Oliver, off the turnover. Watch him at the other end. Ignites some transition the other way, and Alexander Oliver goes all the way for the layup. That's our Dodge play of the game. Brought to you by Dodge. Grab life. As we continue to, to create new terminology, would you call that a block outlet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a block outlet? <laughs> I tell you what, he is lights out so far in this tournament with some of the athleticism he has shown in the past two Alabama State games. And there are probably some NBA guys around going, hmm. You know, with only two rounds in the draft, you might not draft an athlete like and Xavier Oliver out of Alabama State, but you'd certainly invite him in and give him a shot to make your squad as a, some instant energy off your bench. 
Yeah, well, there's a lot of athletes in the NBA, that's for sure, but a guy that he probably is similar to or closest to would be a guy like Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Trap in the corner. They swing the ball very well. Campbell had all day. Oh, you give him that kind of time, he's gonna knock that down every time. And now it is four point. That's differential, my addition started to escape me here. Approaching four minutes to go. No matter what defense you're playing, it always gets better with communication. As you see State now starting to talk as cutters go through. Ricky Ricketts into the game. So it's Marcus Young, shot clock inside of 10. Ricketts, short on the three. Close to being a foul there. He thought he was fouled. Gotta be careful when you're going out on those three-point shooters. Interesting enough here, you have Horton, Obi Trotter, and Burks out of the game right now. Coach Petaway is resting them for the home stretch. Campbell. And Xavier Oliver coming through with the offensive rebound. They get a fresh 35. Coach Fivery probably would like him to use Oliver. Oliver dumped down inside. Spicer puts it up and in off the glass. Physical, physical game here, Eric. I don't care how it turns out. MVP for, Harris, for Alabama State is Xavier Oliver because he has brought a lot of energy. He's doing all the dirty work here for Alabama State in the second half. He plays a lot bigger than his six foot seven inch frame because of the great leaping ability, going up high and making things happen with great anticipation. He gets rebound after rebound, big rebound after rebound. He's giving entry passes. He's playing the entire game. Big time game by this young man. And there's Spicer. A lot of contact inside, no call, but he does get the basket on the nice bank shot. You remember he got him off to such a good start early with eight quick points in the first half. Exactly. He brought the energy in the first half. Xavier Oliver picked it up in the first half when it, when it kind of went down for him. And with more from the Alabama A&M huddle, Jay Walker. Jay? Coach Bozeman, you picked up on it earlier. Coach Petaway was trying to rest Obi Trotter. It looked like that plan backfired. He told Obi, Obi didn't want to leave the game. You're only going to sit on the bench for a minute, son. But when he called the timeout, they were only down by one. By the time he gets him back into the game, they're down by six. Guys, back to you. All right, Jay Walker. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this kind of game here, you just never know. It's changing so fast. Takes it through everybody, and they get him on the offensive foul. That'll be number three against Trotter, who has 14 points. Five of them in the second half here. One three-pointer and a two-point field goal. No, they weren't looking for that to happen. To get Obi try to get his, is his third foul? Yeah, I believe it is his third foul. And we are gonna take a timeout ourselves here. 2.48 to go. The winner will go dancing. We'll be right back. Four. 53 47 248 to go the winner will go dancing what will transpire i'm sure it's going to come right down to the wire as we usually get here at the swag tournament time for the dodge long distance shot of the game and that is malcolm campbell who has all day to look it over after receiving the pass from oliver and he drains it the little general coming through in the second half he has a couple three-pointers the long distance shot of the game brought to you by dodge dodge Grab life. <laughs> Malcolm Campbell trying to figure out how to navigate and run his offense. A little token pressure being applied by Horton. Now they'll try to trap him when he gets over half court, but he got rid of it pretty quickly. Coach Fibre, of course, wants them to run as much offense and much, as much time off the clock as possible and get a good look. That one almost thrown away. Poor possession here. Poor possession by State. Got to get a tip up. And the 
shooter throw by guess who? Xavier Oliver. Looking down the machine, comes to an office event. It is an eight point differential now. Trotter. Short. Oliver, low bridge, bodies hit hard. And we get a traveling call on Spicer. Uh, wow, I don't know about that one. I don't know if he had possession long enough to get a travel. And sometimes you get the roll, sometimes you don't. Big fella gets the roll. He's been doing everything well here in this game tonight. Stayed on a 7-0 run the last three minutes. Running out of time, and they have to take a timeout before the violation does Obi Trotter. Exactly two minutes to go. Eight points separating Alabama State from Alabama A&M. NBC Network's knockout series returns next Friday. Don't miss a round of ballroom boxing from heavyweights to featherweights. We'll showcase up and up showcase up and coming talent in the boxing arena. Watch ballroom boxing Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern here on NBC Network. And the place is jumping. Bear Park Arena. Alabama State fans thinking they might have something to celebrate right now. Uh, for more, let's go to Jay Walker. I mean, I know I'm down here in Alabama, and I heard this was nothing but football country, but I can't tell up in this arena. It started off as a friendly basketball game. It's turned into a state civil war. Half the arena is happy. The other half is sad. Cousins and uncles are fighting with each other. Hey, it's coming down to the wire, but in Alabama, they only know one way to do it, and that's to do it hard. Todd, EC, back to you. All right, dogs and cats living together. Everything's just in turmoil here as this battle of Alabama. Did you catch the Bill Murray line? Uh, yes. Okay. You didn't laugh. I wondered if you caught that. Anyway, Burks off the inbound. Trotter, pull up. Yes. Big basket by Obi Trotter. They needed that. That's the reason why Coach Petaway wanted him back on the floor. Got a hold there. And Burks uh, caught on the hold before the inbounds play. <laughs> And you might have read better please slip there. That boy pushed my man, he told the official, but it's not going to work. Hey, you got to try all you can. You got to beg and plead for their sympathy. Hedaway said that is terrible, but Malcolm Campbell, one of the better free throw shooters in the SWAC conference at 81.2%. That's definitely not the guy you want on the line. No, you don't want him on the line with a minute 42 to go and trying to whittle away at a deficit here. Burks picked up his fourth foul with that grab on the inbound play. See all the AM players looking up at the scoreboard and the clock. Now is now, now is the time where you're talking about when that frustration starts to set in. They got to keep their minds on, on the job at hand. Continue to just play the game. Value each possession. Try to get buckets so you can get into your press. Ryder trying to create off the dribble. He does. Battle for the loose ball on the rebound. And it comes out to Alabama State. And they call a jump ball. And, and Spicer is walking around in some pain. Might have gotten a finger to the eye. Man, Obi Trotter's in there with the big fellas. Former football player, not afraid of contact. For a 6 1 guard. He's a tough, tough customer there. Tough customer. Spicer and they are really battling for every loose ball. Of course, AM really needs to get him back. Who said, for, who said basketball wasn't a contact sport? Well, anybody who said it hadn't watched it because these big fellas go at it. A better angle. Spicer. A whole lot of contact. And he got slapped right there, and that's when he came down with the ball. And another face, somebody swiping at the ball, can't manage to catch him in the eye. And Spicer have been active. Ten points, eight rebounds. Active, especially for Coach Spivery in the first half. Well, Trotter threw that in bounds and wanted to try to catch it himself. Miscommunication. Yeah, he tried to throw it off the back of one of his teammates, and the teammate moved at the last second. That's what happened there. So a key turnover in that particular situation and a pick of the pocket of Golden who took his eye off Terry Horton and that was a major mistake because Horton picked his pocket. Well, Horton stay involved in the game. You can't give up. Oftentimes situations like that happen. 
Well, you have a mishap, and then the team will give up. But Horton stayed with it. You got to stay aggressive. While Golden was looking at the next place to pass the basketball, Horton was stealing it from him off the dribble, and he gets the foul. And now a timeout taken by Alabama AM. You know, Van Petaway looking each man in the eye. How bad do you want it? Well, you got a minute, 10 seconds to show me. Strategy here for Alabama AM, coach. What do you do? Well, first, get these free throws. After you make these free throws, we get into our trap. You try to get a trap, don't foul them. Make them throw a bad pass, which is what they did very successful at doing, doing that. Then on the, when you come back down, get a good basket. There's no need to panic and try to get the threes right now. NBC, of course, is proud to have brought you a swagtacular excitement during regular season games and here at the 2004 Jeep Swag Basketball Tournament to catch the games on NBC and to see other exciting family programming, call your cable operator or satellite provider and ask for NBC Network. Alabama State, obviously, the strategy here is to take care of the basketball and hit free throws when they get into a force foul situation. You don't sit back and, and wait for the trap to come. Move the basketball, look for the skip pass opportunities as much as you can. Get a, get a, get a good shot on the offense again. Terry Horton just threw in his 17th point of the night. Horton, the 6'3 senior out of Ozark, Alabama. Two for two there. And we have uh, substitutions. Ricky Ricketts coming in along with Marcus Young. Now, now you're talking about right. situational substitutions. Looking for the speed and quickness. Small lineup for a and The only way it could backfire on them is on, in the rebounding category. Marcus Young a little bit overzealous. Trying to trap in the backcourt. And again, the great free throw shooter, Malcolm Campbell, going to go to the free throw line for two. Now they sub him back with the big fellas. So they can go down on the offensive end, get the ball inside if they can, also to get the rebounds, offensive rebounds. Malcolm Campbell rather shooting the one and one. I said two earlier, he is shooting the one and one. And now he'll get that second free throw. Alabama State, 60% free throw shooting tonight. Before that one by uh, Campbell. I'd like to be a little better there if you're a coach, but you'll take the clutch free throws down the stretch for an opportunity to go to the dance. That's for sure. Fair Park Arena. Alabama AM trying to erase an eight-point deficit with a minute to go against Alabama State for the SWAC championship. Along with Ty Bozeman and Jay Walker, I am Eric Clemens, and Obi Trotter just throws in another three-pointer. Give him 19 points for the night. Second three-pointer in the second half, and it's still a five-point differential inside of a minute. Can't give him open threes. You gotta get to him, you gotta foul him. Time is not on their side. Two possession ball game up, oh, turnover. No, not back court. That's my call. All right. He hit the ball. All right. Why? Is, yeah, I was going to ask you why is that a bad call? Because I the thought defender the defender hit the ball. We get a chance to look at it. I thought the defender hit the ball. And it, no, not right now. I'm right. talking about right, right there. Okay. The defender hit the ball. They give him a key turnover here, so a three pointer could make it a one point game. And so we've got. Coach Byberry taking a 37 second time out right now with his team up by five. You know, I tell you, in this kind of situation here, you just want your team to remember, hey, keep your composure. Keep your composure. They need a big time stop right here. Do not foul a guy going up for a three point shot as well. And then rebound. The possession does not end until you get the rebound. Now, if you're, if you're AM, you want to take your time to get a good shot. I can see Obi Trotter, Horton. Both of those guys are good three point shooters, so they can very well get that. And you also have Ricky Ricketts in the game as well. Time now for our Office Depot MVPs of the game. Game still far from being over, 40.4 seconds left. But for Alabama AM, Obi Trotter 
And for Alabama State, Xavier Oliver, with 16 points, eight rebounds, couple of spectacular looking plays. That's our MVPs brought to you by Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. Xavier Oliver, been a real contributor. Here. 35 seconds to go. Horton calmly knocks him in off the glass. And Horton has 20. Got to get the ball in bounds, though. Three point ball game. Shot clock is up. 34.2 seconds to go. Almost a five second violation. Bodies fly everywhere. Alabama State has it. And a foul in the backcourt wow. against Kevin Spicer, who's only a 56% free throw shooter. Ooh. Well, that was close right there. I mean, I wonder if, if, if the uh, Alabama State players know that they have timeouts because in that situation, you have to call a timeout because that was pretty close. And the thing about Kevin Spicer, as we look here at the replay, the thing about Kevin Spicer that I noticed in the games in the tournament, he nails them when it counts. So you can be a bad free throw shooter, but when it, it's in two different categories. What do you shoot when the game is on the line? Some guys just need pressure. The focus. A lot of coaches say free throw shooting is a lot of focus. When a guy's really focused, he remembers what to do and hit, hits the free throws. Exactly, exactly. Sometimes it works that way. Calmly stroked both of them. Don't want to foul here. Don't want to give him an and one. OB Trotter got all the way to the rack. And we'll go to the line for two. And a chance to oh, shave two points off the deficit with no time expiring on the clock. 25 seconds to go. OB Trotter, pretty good guard here. Use of the contact. You know he'd like to have that and one there. But hey, just get these two, OB. You still got a chance at it. Obi Trotter looking for points 20 and 21. That says something about his ability. While they don't want a guy to score easily, they certainly don't want to allow him to score a, you know, a quick basket. And Trotter just willed his way in. The trap almost had him, having Campbell in trouble in the back court. Trying to foul Oliver, they could not. Now with 14 or 13.4 seconds to go, they get a foul against, it looks like a, a Raphael Golden will go to the line. And Golden, a 74% free throw shoot. Give State credit, though, because they're moving the ball around and they're also protecting the ball. I mean, just because you get a pass doesn't mean that the opposition could knock the ball out your hands. Golden going for points six and seven. Coach Spivey, normally cool, calm, and collective. You can see right there, that's evidence that he is not always cool, calm, and collective. Got that tie flapping around. Very into it. Now, will he straighten it? Five, four, no. Still hasn't straightened it. It'll fall. There, there he goes. He finally straightened it. Trust us, folks. As Raphael Golden about to do a lot more important things than straight and tie. Two big, big free throws here. Got to hit at least one of them to give him a four-point cushion. AM missing only five free throws for the night. Alabama State has mixed six out of their 19. Golden in the uh, penalty situation is going to get two shots. Oh, miss number one. Right now, just a one possession ball game. He can get this one. It's a two, possession, two ball. possession ball game, though. He really needs this one. And that was a big one. No Four fouls. point game, 13.4 to go. No fouls with the AM. You can get a two and then come right back and get another two. Try to short. AM clears the rebound. And Spicer fouled in the backcourt. And they don't like the way he was throwing the elbows trying to protect the ball. Well, he but got hit in the face last time. He, he sure did. He's determined not to let that happen again. This came out over with yet, folks. Jet. 5.4 seconds yet. Campbell raising his fists. And his coach says, hey, get over here. 
No time to celebrate just yet. This game right here is significant right here. This is bragging rights. This is a heated rivalry. So to say that you kept your rival from getting into the NCAA tournament, oh, that's huge. I sure misses the first one. You might be a little excited All right now. The the it's still a two possession ball game. 5.4 seconds left. And the Coach Finally and the Alabama State Hornets will be making their second trip to the big dance in the last four years. Final 5.4 seconds. to the big dance. And the Hornets of Alabama State can jump up and down and claim their number one in the SWAC conference this season, a conference that was dominated in the regular season by Mississippi Valley State. But Valley State upset earlier in this tournament, opening the door for the two seed. The Hornets of Alabama State are going dancing, and they're really happy about it. So is Coach Rob Spivery. Arena in just a few moments. Stay with us on NBC. Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and it is never something you take comfort in when you finish just short of your dream of making the big dance. And when you make it, well, that's the kind of jubilation you normally see. And with the winning coach, Rob Spivey, our own Jay Walker. Jay? I'm not only with the winning coach, I'm with the happiest family in the city of Birmingham right now. Coach Spivey, joined by his lovely family here, his daughters as well. Coach Spivey, how do you feel? I know you don't have much of a voice. This is so satisfying because we started out 1-5 in, in league play and made our way to the championship. I'm so proud of these guys. What do you expect to get out of this? How, how, where, where do you go from here? This is such a high. How long do you celebrate? And then how long does it take you to get back to work? Well, we'll celebrate for a day or two and go to the NCAA tournament and enjoy that experience. I know you'll make us all proud. Hey, I want to go party with these folks right here. <laughs> back to you, Eric and Todd. All right, Jay, Coach, final 30 seconds. Your final assessment on what propelled Alabama State to this point. Hey, they, they turn it around, rebounding taking care of the basketball, being smart, possession basketball, that's what gives them their ticket to the dance. Once again, your final 63-58. Alabama State is going dancing with Sam Millich. Coming up next, the yard will be followed by the Mia Women's Championship game at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, Hampton against Delaware State. For all of us here in Birmingham, Alabama, Jody Manns, Todd Bozeman, Jay Walker, I'm Eric Clemens. So long, everybody. This has been an